if you're just tuning in this is what are you saying hashtag ways now with every relationship there is high and definitely lows today we're talking about the lows and how to resolve issues before they escalate now Tosin is a relationship coach who has spent the last four years working people through tough times in their love lives having experienced the rocky journey in her life uh, in her love life herself she is passionate about helping other people make wise relationship decisions and experience a love that truly lasts a lifetime wow now remember you can join the conversation tweet to us at plus tv africa with the hashtag ways or at ways show africa one now or send us an sms or whatsapp to 81 Thank you so much, Teresa, for joining us. Thank you. You, knew that, you, know, you know the first question coming, right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you need to know. Uh, well, you have to you just take a cue. It's the rocky mm -hmm. part. Because mm -hmm. now, the truth is that with everything, when everybody's talking love, 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 you know, everybody mm -hmm. has that perfect muse and boom, Cinderella story Halloween. about love, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know and dangerous. not many people like to hear the, the rocky part of relationships. Mm -hmm. So when I read your profile, I was like, okay, this would be a good way to start, you know, by, you know, just walk us through what was it like when you had the rocky experience and how did you come out of that? Okay, um, so basically, um, I always say this, that when I was much younger, I had a perfect plan for my life that included being married by the time I was 25, you know, amongst, of course, other things. And by the time I was 25, I had already been in about five relationships, and I was still a long way from meeting the man that I'm now married to. Wow. Right? Yeah. So um, all my dreams pretty much shattered. And it was because I experienced a, a certain kind of cycle, you know, I, it was an embarrassing cycle in my love life. And for a long time, I couldn't place my hand on what it was until very much later in my life, as I got more mature and I, as I started to dig deep. Um, the truth is that I always, always experienced one broken relationship after another. But I think the most fundamental thing in my experience is that I began to realize that it was not an external factor. It was not like something was happening to me. Mm -hmm. It was I that had a lot of growing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, it was my, um, my understanding and perception about relationships. It was, in some cases, um, the driving force behind me getting into a relationship in the first place, my motive for going into a relationship in the first place. You know, mm -hmm. so I had a, a kind of a mindset block that needed to be dealt with. And until I dealt with that mindset block, I continued to experience broken relationships. I just couldn't sustain a relationship for the longest time. You know, so I had that a really, really rocky experience. And I remember um, it got to a point where I was almost um, becoming like a laughing stock. People would just be like, uh, yeah, there she goes again. She's in a new relationship, you know, because it was, yeah. So you were like a serial data. Exactly. You know, I just couldn't be by myself. And I hadn't dealt with the issues that I had. You know, so it's not like I was meeting, they were all bad people or something, but I had mindset issues that I needed to deal with. I had, you know, just root causes. And I feel like that's, that's the problem for a lot of people. It's not necessarily that the person they are with is bad, you know. Sometimes people just have a mindset block. Sometimes people are in, the, in a relationship for the wrong reasons, Reason. you know. And if you're there for the wrong reasons, it, will, it won't take so long, you know. So for, for other mm. people like you, yeah. what do you think are the main reasons for people to, you know, enter the relationship mm -hmm. with like with the bad intentions or ha entering relationships and having conflict? So, what are the main reasons for conflicts in relationships? I think first of all. Um, a lot of people, they're yet to come to a realization of who they are in the first place. Okay. I mean, they're in conflict with themselves. They're in conflict with their own persons, you know, and when you're not whole and when you're not complete in yourself, when you're, you're taking um, an unwholesome person into a relationship, there's going to be some sort of conflict because you are, you're not even at peace with yourself yet. You know, that's one. Two, I, I also think that, um, especially in the social media age, 
there's a lot of pressure on single people. I agree. You know, a whole lot of pressure <laughs> on single people. And then you're following all the wedding um, sites and seeing all manner of things every time you, you, you open your social media. You know, so people, a lot of people go into relationships into relationships because they feel like they just need to get married. You know, their pictures need to feature on a certain um, website or whatever, you know, and so they're in the relationship with the wrong motives and they can't just sustain the relationship because they're not even prepared for the relationship. So a lot of times they're, they're pre there's preparation issues, there's mindset issues, there's, um, uh, and of course, if you're not going into a relationship for the right reasons, chances are you might go for someone you're not even compatible with at okay. all, mm -hmm. you know, because you just, just anybody, you know, well, whoever it is, ready. you know, I just Only want to be, you. exactly, I just want to be in a relationship, you know, and then you don't consider the, the critical things you're supposed to consider before going into a, into a relationship and then it's not long before either the, the, the it's better, the relationship crumbles before you do get married, you know. Mm. How do you know who but you're yeah. compatible with? Um, I mean, one of the first things I would say is you need to ask the right questions. You know, um, I, I feel like a lot of women shy away from asking questions for fear of being termed too forward okay. or too desperate. But there's absolutely um, nothing desperate about wanting to make the right decision. And to make the right decision, you need the right information. You know, so um, you need to ask the right questions. For me, I remember back then, um, as silly as I could be and as rocky as my relationship life was, one thing I never made a mistake about was um, ascertaining the intentions of the other person, you know, and knowing what kind of person they were. I was very, very good with asking probing questions. You know what I mean? I wanted to know what their values were. I wanted to know when they wanted to settle down. Not because I wanted them to propose to me the next day, but I wanted to have an idea of where they were going in their life. And then that would mm -hmm. help me know if I needed to up and run or if it was something I, that I could consider you know so asking the right questions is very important of course knowing yourself and um, understanding what your own values are and seeing if um, your values match the other person's values that's another very critical okay. thing. you know I do yeah. have I do have a story when it comes to this asking questions mm. um, <laughs> <laughs> dating life is hilarious it is. honestly so I have learned that when I hang out with a guy I just tell you like the surface questions I don't tell you this is what I like this is what I look out for because I realize that they start aligning mm -hmm. to fit that person I exactly. created so yeah. I leave you to find it out for yourself and mm -hmm. also I learned to start asking questions like it's literally like in a subtle interview. For instance, mm -hmm. there was this guy I met and he was kind and nice and I felt like, okay, yeah, well, I could give this one a chance. And then one night like that, I woke up 1 a.m. and I sent messages. Are you married? Is there, have you ever been married before? Is there a possibility that <laughs> anyone has money? been married to you? Do you have kids? I love that Is one. there a possibility you have there kids anywhere? <laughs> and guess what? He told me yes to all. Wow! wow. No way! What? Are you not proud of your family? Why didn't you say so? You know, so yeah. I think if ladies learn to ask a lot more so questions, good. it will save us a lot of heartbreak. Yeah. But why 1 a.m. though? <laughs> I was starting to like this guy. Wow. You know? Okay. So I just, so you know good, how yeah. you, 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 you had a conversation with someone and you slept? Chances are you might think of the person. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, usually the last thing you thought about or listened to reflects in your dream most times. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, so that's what happened. Okay, so tell me, because we have a lot of young people, because you have quite an interesting story. Before age 25, you yeah. dated five guys, mm -hmm. you know, and you're not the type that I, I can see that you jump from pillar to post, post and all of that you're actually very cultured so tell me um what what advice would you give a young person right now going through that same conflict you know because it's the same thing uh, um we we had uh, our first guest say something about you know before you go into a relationship. a relationship you must be complete first before yeah. you meet another complete person not two empty yeah. people coming together mm -hmm. and i felt that was really uh, profound oh, also yeah. coming to what you're saying mm -hmm. that don't be a conflict with yourself because mm -hmm. if you're a conflict with yourself you definitely fight you know when you get into that relationship so how do young people manage their expectations and what should they be doing you know if the man is not coming what can i do today's valentine why how can i not put myself under pressure because of yeah. course there's social media and everything mm -hmm. yeah what are the kind of things they should do yeah. i think one of the most important things that a single person should do is to learn how to to just master the art of managing pressure 
internal and external pressure. Once you know how to manage your own pressure, you know, you'll be able to control the amount of external pressure that, um, that determines your decisions. I say this because I see um, pressure at the root of most of um, the wrong relationship decisions that people make. True. You know, and um, sometimes people don't know where to draw the line. They go overboard with social media. For me, I say if you need to take a break, take a break from social media on a day like Valentine's Day, except you've grown to the point where it doesn't, and you have to be honest with yourself, except you've grown to the point where it doesn't bother you what you see online, you might need to take a break for a while and live, you know, and just manage that pressure internally. It's so important. And I wish single people knew this more, that like this is one of the bestest seasons of your life. Um, but because of the way social media makes marriage look, of course, marriage can be beautiful for, mm -hmm. for sure, you know, but it's just another phase in your life. And that phase also comes with responsibilities and challenges, you know, and it's very important that we learn to enjoy where we are on the way to where we're going, you know, and just manage pressure. Managing pressure is so important and just... Um, it's a, it's a time where you want to discover yourself and really know I who agree. you are, you yes. know? Because when you do discover yourself, you will know the kind of person that can fit into your life, mm. you know? When you have an idea of what you want to do with your life, where you want to go, then you can filter your options when yeah, they come. I, I like that part of discovering yes. yourself. But, you know, there's also something that people say that, you know, the older you get, mm -hmm. the more headstrong you become, the more... Um, the more um, What's the word? Focus. My word is sacrosanct, you know, that kind of personality, assertive you become. And as a young lady, it becomes a problem for a man, for instance, mm -hmm. if you are to, let's do it. No, no, this is how I know how to do it. So is there no, is, is, is there a risk involved when you just stay for a while and you're not dating, and you're getting older and all of that? Is there a risk involved yeah. in that? You get too comfortable. <laughs> Because you get well, too comfortable yeah. taking decisions on your own. Because when somebody else is coming into that relationship, I see that that would be a big conflict. Because yes. now the person is coming to say, no, I'm in your life now. We have to do it this way. This she's way. smiling because she's mm -hmm. understanding what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> what? No, because after a certain yeah. age, yeah. Of yes. being so what, alone for a, for a while, time, you're kind of yeah. set in your yes. ways. Because you take all your decisions and you don't need permission. and stuff. Exactly. Okay, because of all these single people. <laughs> yeah, we're done with single. Hold on. So how do we keep the love spirit in a relationship, like a married relationship? Mm. You know, what are the things? Is it all this Valentine <laughs> stuff that we're supposed to be doing? Uh, you know, so stay, like trying to manage conflict and keeping the love in a relationship. How do we do that? One of the most important things is to keep your communication line open at all times. You see, when, when we get married, we often... Um, tend to, after a while, begin to drift apart because a lot of things happen, you know. Maybe you get, you get pregnant, you have a baby, you know, you, you get a better paying job and then the demands of that work is a lot, you know, and you're doing your own thing, she's doing her own thing, she's taking care of the kids and she's also working on her career and you're working on your career and before you know what's happening, you didn't intend for it to happen but you, you just kind of start to grow apart, you know, but I feel like it's very, very important that we, are, we stay sensitive and um, we recognize when that drifting starts to happen. Because if I say we won't drift, I'd be lying. You know, because no matter how great your relationship is, those times will come, those seasons will come. But I think if you're sensitive enough to know, to realize when you've started to drift apart, apart mm -hmm. you, know, you, can, um, you can have an intervention of some sort, you know, take a vacation. Or take, even if you can't go on a vacation because maybe you have little kids or whatever, go away from the house for a little while, you know, even if it's just for a whole day, you know, you have to find that, um, that common ground, that place where you can, that safe place where you can run to and just be by yourself. It's so important. Um, yeah, I think basically communication is very, very important in a married relationship. You have to just um, find that time to, to always talk about things, you know, because um, things could be happening in your life and your spouse doesn't even know about it. Not because you don't want to tell them, but because you've just grown apart. You know, I feel like that's, um, that drifting apart is usually, is usually where the problem often starts, you know, mm -hmm. so. So, yeah. like, people, I mean, people often say that 
conflict is good as mm -hmm. it you know it helps you get to know the person better mm -hmm. what not to do and what not what do you think do you think it helps strengthen relationships what's your yeah. thoughts absolutely i think conflict can be a really good thing um, when it's properly managed. If it's not properly managed, then it becomes a crisis. A crisis is what you don't want to have. Okay. But conflict is okay because um, when you successfully manage a conflict, it has a way of um, opening your eyes to your partner in a way that you've never seen them before. Mm. You feel like you've crossed a mm. hurdle together. Mm -hmm. You feel like you're stronger. You know, you feel like you know something about them now that you didn't know before. Mm -hmm. You feel like you understand them a little better. And you actually do understand them a little better, you know. So I feel like, yeah, conflict is not necessarily a bad thing. When we do learn how to manage it very well, when we learn how to communicate our feelings in ways that are not offensive to the other person, you know, when we learn how to not just seek to be understood, but also to understand the other person's point hey. of view. Yeah. Stephen Covey. Yeah. You know, so if you, if, you okay. had a, oh, okay. oh, if you had a final word okay. mm -hmm. for someone going through conflict right now in their relationship, mm -hmm. what would that or be? Or maybe even married to a narcissist. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You'd be surprised. Um, for someone like that in, in a tough situation in their marriage, I'd say um, it's important that you find a way to communicate and I know that you may be hurting right now because of maybe something that your partner has done or maybe you just feel like you're not being heard or you're not being understood um, but it's important to find a way to communicate in such a way that you don't aggravate the situation you know because oftentimes when we communicate we communicate with all our feelings and all our emotions and all of that um, if you've been trying to resolve it in a, in a certain way and it hasn't worked, you might need to consider another way. You know, maybe, for instance, you, you realize that once you start talking, tempers you know, flare will up, just yeah. flare up. You know, you might need to write. Yeah. You know, you could write him an email or you could write her an email, for example, when your thoughts are better put together. And you can actually say, this is how I feel about this. This and this is what has been going on. Can we find some time? Can we um, set a, a date and a time to talk about this? You know, that way you've thought through, you know, and you're coming with your facts, not just your feelings. And you're able to match um, both and have a better result. Wow, thank you so much, Tosin. I like the email a lot. Yeah, yeah I, I do like, that. I, do I like that. the date yeah. part. I don't yeah. like can we email. Fit? Yes, yes. Let's I see. Do I bought Yeah, and then you can, in the email, then you can say, can we talk about this? Yeah. Or what? Or just, just a date. These are the things nice I want to talk food. about. <laughs> All right, All right, so thank yeah. you so much, Tosin. Thank you thank for you having so me. Much. I really enjoyed the conversation today. I did, I did. And if you hear both our guests, they're saying one thing. It first starts with you as a person. Yeah. You must be first of all complete and be in love with yourself before you can now give love. You know, that's, that way you'll be able to, yeah. you know. So thank you so much, Tosin. Thank you now, catch us live every weekend from Fridays to Sundays at 8 p.m. as we bring thought provoking, engaging, informative conversations to your screen. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. At the end of the day, you can either focus on what's tearing you apart or what's keeping you together. Do you agree with that quote of saying? Mm. Yeah, focus on what is keeping you together. Keeping yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's focusing on the right things in yeah. your relationship. Absolutely. So enjoy the rest of your evening and happy Valentine's Day yeah. again. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Love. Yeah. Thank you to um, Treasure Cake for our cakes. <laughs>